here's what I want to do. I want to investigate this space in here. Okay, I want to see what's happening. So as it were, I'm going to try and zoom in. Okay, underneath this, I'm going to ask you to draw a number of table values. This one probably doesn't need to be as large. Okay, now, this is tricky because the techniques we've used before just trying to you know, put numbers in randomly has not given us as much information as we'd like. So we need to be a little more directed and purposeful in this. I want to check what's happening between 0 and 1. I don't need to check 0 and 1 again, I already know what happens for those. So I want some fractions between 0 and 1 and I want to choose some useful ones. Okay. Now, do you remember how over here, see these guys over here? I didn't pick them at random. I chose them very deliberately. 1, 2, 4, and 8. The next one would have been 16. And the one after that would have been 32. Why did I choose those numbers? Have a think about this. 1, 2, 4, and 8. 8's not a square. 1, 2, 4, and 8. I'll just, I'm just going to hold on. I just really want to make sure you don't get that moment where you're like, I don't get it. I don't understand. I see a thing, but I don't understand. If you pay attention, I can help you understand. I chose each of these guys because they are each a power of 2. This is 2 to the power of 0, 2 to the power of 1, 2 squared, 2 cubed. The next one would have been 2 to the power of 4, which is 16. Then 2 to the power of 5, which is 32, and so on. Does that make sense? So I want to choose powers of 2 between 0 and 1. Here's one of them. See that guy? That's between 0 and 1, isn't it? That's a power of 2. What's another power of 2 that I could pick in here? Yeah, A quarter. Now, interestingly, I usually go from left to right, yeah? But a half is bigger than a quarter, isn't it? So... A quarter is smaller, so maybe instead of a half being here... Oh, oh guys. Settle down. <laughs> I've betrayed you, sorry. I'm going to put a half over here. Brian then suggested a quarter. Brian. Brian. And then an eight. And then a sixteen. Okay, so we already know what happens for this one. We already know. For a half, what's the power that goes with a half? One. Negative one, there it is. What do you think is the power that goes with a quarter? Okay, so now we've got enough information. This is finally enough. I've got this space down the bottom. Now what I'm going to ask you to do is construct this quite carefully. You remember we noticed these negative values over here? No good. So instead of, can you maybe just wait and watch? Because your page will look great and then you'll have no idea where we're at, which is a problem. We're going to draw a bit of a different set of axes. Usually we draw both sides, but I don't need to draw any of this negative side. Did you remember that? Like they're all giving us nothing useful. So I'm going to draw a graph that looks like this. See how I've got the y-axis here and the x-axis here, but I've only got these values of x. Okay. Another reason why it's handy to make that side so much bigger is look at the x-values. Do you notice they go up pretty quickly? Right? So they're going to go all the way up to 8, whereas my y-values are going to be smaller. Okay. So I think, let's have a look. Let's go this far. One, two, three. Okay, so you can see on my y-axis, I go three up and three down. Whoops, should have the most important spot there. On my x-axis, I go all the way up to eight because that's the biggest number that I have there. Okay, so let's start to plot the points that we know. 
Um, let's do them in the order that they're actually written left to right, because those are the orders we actually calculated them in. Okay? So the first point that we got is over here. When x is 1, y equals 0. So 1, 0, 1, 0 is one of the points on my graph. Where is 1, 0? How would you describe it? Use some words. It's on the x-axis, the horizontal axis, and it's very good. The first point right there. There's 1, 0. Don't bother labeling it because we're going to have a lot of points on here. You'll get too busy. OK, this next one is 2, 1. Yeah? So I'm going to go across two units and up one. So on my graph, that looks like about there. The next one is 4, 2. The one after that is 8, 3. Go ahead and draw those in. Uh, not just yet. We will connect them all together at the end. OK. So these are the values. These are the points we got out of the first table. But then do you remember what we said? We were like, yeah, we don't know what's going on in here. So that's how we kind of zoomed in. All of these values are between 0 and 1. Okay. Now, we calculated these, but on my graph, I actually don't have enough to fit this first one. So I'm going to go to this one. When x is equal to 1 over 8, y is equal to negative 3. Okay. So 1 over 8 is quite close over here, right? Because if you went halfway, then halfway again, then halfway again, you can see how close you are to the axis, and my board is obviously a lot bigger than your page. That was a good shot. Okay, so, can you see, I'm going to be somewhere around here, very, very close to the axis. One eighth is pretty small, right? That was the first one. What's the second last one over there? What are the coordinates? A quarter and negative two. So that's about there. A little bit further over, not much though. And then the last one over there is a half, comma, negative 1. So that's around the halfway between 0 and 1. OK. Now can you see the shape? You can see it mapped out. We've got enough points. You can almost, even without drawing it, you can see what shape it is. Okay. Tell me, is that a straight line? It's clearly not a straight line. So you're going to have a curve that passes through there. Use a pencil, connect the dots as closely as you can, and see what you get. OK, now this is pretty cool because it's a very interesting shape. We should label it, by the way. This is y equals log base 2 of x. It has a single intercept, an x-intercept. What's its value? Have a look. The x-intercept. It's just 1, 1, 0 are the coordinates. OK. Uh, why don't I see any y-intercepts? Think, why can't I find one? Have a look. Ryan. Well, yeah, see this? See this guy here? To find a y-intercept, you let x equal 0. But we're investigating, we found that x can never be 0. There's no value of y that matches up to it. And we have a name for this, right? We have a name for what happens when you get closer and closer and closer to something, but you can never get there. It starts with an A. What's it start with? It's an asymptote, right? Right here, can you draw in in a dotted line? That's the asymptote, OK? The equation of the asymptote is x equals 0, OK? The equation of the asymptote is x equals 0. 